I really liked what the authors of this book said, and um, they share that so many in this generation hurt because they lack the healthy relationships God has designed them to experience with both himself and other people. Many are asking the questions, who am I? Where do I belong? And does my life have any meaning? Without the relational anchor God has designed them to have. So while this is talking about Gen Z, I think it really touches on all generations and a struggle that just humankind has when we are separate from God. We not only are lonely and experience loneliness, but these questions, who am I, where do I belong, does my life have any meaning, they're, let's see, how do I say this? Um, they're repetitive and they're very loud in the mind, if that makes sense. Um, and I say that not because I'm Gen Z, but I'm just speaking out of my own experience when I was separated from the Lord as a young college-aged person. Uh, these are the questions that I asked um, and others. You know, there's other questions like these that aren't listed. But I think one of them is, you know, God, if you are there, do you love me? Do I matter? Um, those are other questions that could be asked. And of course, the answer is yes. And of course, he loves us and he loves them. And so we just continue to pray that he would reveal himself to them so that they might change this, this title, lonely, loneliest generation to, um, I don't know, the most loved generation <laughs> uh, that might be reaching, but, um, I think that they could be the most loved, but of course there's generations that come after them too. Uh, so, you know, the, the generation that is after God's own heart or, um, you know, the generation that impacts the kingdom of God in a huge way. So in thinking of identity, because when you think of some of these things, a lot of that has to do with identity. And, you know, let's just agree to pray into Gen Z and other younger generation. Well, really all generations. Let's just agree to pray into all of our lives that our identity would be founded and firm in, in Christ. Um, so anyway, the next thing I loved was, um, they, they talk about some of the things that affect this, this idea of feeling lonely. And while they're really good, I'll leave it to you guys to, you could check out the book like I did from your local library, or you could buy it. Um, but, uh, it's a really good chapter. So this is chapter three. And one of the areas that they talk about, the book has, um, these like side columns where they have like suggestions or little facts or I, I don't think I can, well, I, I don't think it'll show up on the screen, but if you do have access to the book, you'll know what I mean. But for now, um, they have this, this suggestion that as Christians, um, and I talked about this in my last podcast too, from this book, let's be asking questions and letting some of the younger generations ask questions. And if you think about your community and the younger generations, or if you're a millennial or Gen Z, think about the older generations. It's it's not one-sided. It, it goes both ways. And so when we talk about, you know, having, um, you know, connecting generational lines, that we do need to keep that in mind, that we need to reach out to each other. So for these questions, you can ask yourself, um, or you can ask others, maybe in your lighthouse, if you are leading a, a group, um, or if you're a generations group leader, you can also ask your people in your group some of these questions. So I'll just ask, a, I'll ask a few of them. Do you tell the people, the younger generation that you meet that you are available for out, for help outside your group situation. So he's writing this like as if he's talking to a teacher. So I'm trying to rephrase and I'm not doing a very good job. But um, so basically, if if you have a place that you meet or, or are around people of an opposite generation from you, do you let them know that you're available for help? Or 
Do you let them know that you need help? Um, sometimes it's easier to do things ourselves, but it also doesn't build relationship to do things ourselves. And I am speaking to myself as much as I'm speaking to you. Um, so another question is, are you welcoming when younger generation or older generation people first enter the room? So when you think about going to church on Sunday or going to a, a worship and prayer night or your local Aglo Lighthouse meeting or your place of work or any anywhere that you regularly go in your community, are you welcoming to those people who you might not relate to as much? And I don't know that it really applies to just age groups. It could be people who might be just be different than you for some reason. Do you know their names and do you use their names when you talk to them? Let's see. Uh, do you connect with people outside of your regular routine? Do you attend events with people of these other generations? Do you express genuine interest in the lives of these people? So again, I am asking these questions to myself just as much as I'm asking them out loud. But uh, let's see. But I think that they are good questions to start asking and a good foundation of questions to start forming maybe other questions that might be more relevant. Of course, the authors are talking as if they're speaking to teachers. So maybe some of the questions that you might come up with might be a little better. But it's good to get the discussions going. We want to invest in the lives of younger people and sometimes we do have younger people in our lives, whether it be your children, grandchildren, great-grandchildren, grandparents, um, parents, you know, it, it goes both ways, like I said. And we must be willing, though, they, they explain in their book, we must be willing to take the initiative to build relationships with this generation. And they're talking about Gen Z. And I am going to read this part. So they say, can we at least aim to understand where they are coming from rather than responding with anger? Or I would say just responding or reacting really with anger or any other, you know, similar emotion. Our point is simply that building relationships with members of Gen Z involves trying to see the world as they do and imagining what it is like to be a person, to be a young person today. Keep in mind Seeing the world from their perspective does not necessarily mean you agree with their way of thinking. And as I read that, I, uh, well, I was really convicted and the Lord really brought to light um, that, and I, this is not like a pointed statement to anybody or any generation, but I know that on, on social media, I see it the most um, that older generations and I'm not talking about any specific one my generation millennials are older than gen z gen z is older than the little kids that are gen alpha baby boomers are older than gen x so I'm not talking about anyone specifically but I have seen sort of a theme and I think it's been going on for a while and probably before social media even existed that it can be easy to talk about younger generations, especially the ones that you may not really understand because there's such a gap between ages, um, in a negative light. And, and really a lot of the comments are what they, they feel are they're doing wrong or that they don't agree with. Um, how, for example, how can we build relationship with digital natives, meaning Gen Z, who grew up with technology at their fingertips? when we are always complaining about their phones being in their hands or their devices on or the tablet generation or, you know, all of these different titles and, and ideas that we associate with specific generations. Um, when I was growing up, well, really, when I was like a young adult, um, as a millennial, it was like, it seemed like every time I turned on the TV or social media, that millennials were to blame for something that was going on. And and it got exhausting, to be honest, because it was like, wait a second, you don't know me. Just because I was born between this span of years doesn't mean that I'm 
doing those things or that I even have interest in those things. Maybe I am doing those things, but I don't think that they're wrong or, you know, they're making this big negative impact like it's being expressed. Um, and simply, I think most of that is from lack of communication and lack of relationship. So again, that's not like a negative statement to blame anybody. It's just something that I noticed and um, came to mind as I read this part of the book. So I don't want to keep going too much. I know that there's still like so much that I want to share with you guys. Um, but I think it's good to keep some of these things brief so that we can really um, pray about them and ask the Lord to reveal to us how we might go about um, reaching the younger generations through these things and how we might be able to be a presence in their life and lives and build relationships with them so that you know, at, at the very least they can, well, I shouldn't say very least, but so all together that we can reach them with the love of Jesus and also fill in those gaps that make them the loneliest generation and, and reverse that process for them.